Welcome to part two of your transformation into a health sciences librarian. Well, maybe not quite, but this will make you a little more comfortable in the concepts that us health sciences librarians deal with every day. This video will focus on what a PICO question is, why it's important to know about, and how to build a question using this format. I'm actually impressed that any field outside librarianship takes the time to incorporate an entire step to constructing a research question. And as librarians, we already have a leg up because that's part of what we do is to help students take these ill-formed research topics and focus them into something which can be researched, yay for us. In the EBP process, they use the phrase answerable clinical questions, which means they want people to focus on a topic that can actually be researched. So a question like why do bad things happen to good people would not count. This is an actual question I received when working as a hospital librarian. This part of the process is really just three steps, but it causes students so much pain. Most are not used to really thinking about a research question, few have had experiences with PICO, and no one wants to spend any time on this step. Again, this should sound familiar to anyone who has ever worked in a library. This process is slightly easier for us as librarians, but it still takes a little time to get your head around, especially if you don't live in the world of health information research. From years of teaching this to students, there's always a steep and somewhat painful learning curve they have to go through. I emphasize that going through this process actually makes searching so much easier because you end up with a beautiful research question. As with any research topic, students should pick something they actually care about. If they're currently working in a healthcare setting, I usually ask them if there's a process that could be improved or something they'd like to see changed at work. If you're helping a student develop their research question, just know that you may have to pull some teeth in order to get what they really want to research. Again, nothing new there. I'm going to use these two examples to help us work through the process. So what is this PICO thing? It's a method that many healthcare providers use to refine and focus a research topic. It's used a lot in nursing and medicine. So let's go ahead and break the acronym down. Sadly, SALSA is not involved. The P used to stand for just patient, but now it's expanding to include more than that. So when you're looking at a research topic, you want to figure out what's the patient type, what's the problem, or who is the population involved. The I primarily stands for intervention, but it can be any change you're interested in looking at. C can be what you're comparing the intervention to. Outcome is what you expect to see or what you're interested in seeing happen. And time isn't always used, but it is helpful in questions that have a time component. Let's find the PICO components in our donut example. You won't always have an answer for every part, and that's okay. PICO was originally created with medicine and interventions in mind, so when we're working with more qualitative or nursing-related questions, not every part of it is going to have an answer, and that's fine. If you're working with a student, this is a great way to get them to take an overly broad topic and think about what they actually want to know. Okay, so what's the population in this question? What's the very first part? Libraries, or librarians to be more specific. Remember, the intervention is the treatment or event you're interested in. For us, that's donut breaks. The control is what we're comparing the intervention to. In healthcare, this can be compared to the standard practice, to no practice, or to an alternative treatment or therapy. We haven't really built this into our topic, so we'll just say the comparison is no donut breaks, which is sad. The outcome is any change or difference that happens because of the intervention, so we want to know if donut breaks improve morale. The T is usually for time, and in this particular research question, we don't have it. Okay, so that's not too scary, right? Also, delicious. Okay, it's your turn. I'm so excited for you. But before we start breaking this question down, it's important to know and be okay with the fact that you're not always going to know what the students are talking about. Even with 15 years experience as a medical librarian, I don't know what they're talking about half the time. That's okay. That's where we do our reference interview thing. My favorite question to ask students or faculty or healthcare professionals is, can you tell me more about that? Or, I'm not familiar with this treatment or procedure. Can you describe it? Basically, I'm trying to find some keywords or terminology that I can use in my search. Okay, so here's my topic, and this is a real example from when I was a hospital librarian. So some women at the hospital I used to work at had been bringing in paid labor support, also known as doulas, to help them through the labor process. Anecdotally, they seem to have shorter labors and less complications. And so the nurses working with these mothers 
wanted to know if it was worth having a doula or two on staff or even just on call for women without support. Those are women without a partner, teen moms, low-income mothers, the mothers that actually tend to have longer labors and more complications. So they wanted to know, is there any research on the value of doulas or labor support in hospitals? I'll be nice. I went ahead and gave you this request in the form of a fairly focused research topic, but I want you to build the PICO. First of all, the patient or population. Pause the video and come up with this on your own. Either write it down, say it out loud, have it in your head. Now, this is tricky, and it can mess with those just learning about PICO. You may say that doulas are the population, but we really want to know what the impact the doulas have on women in labor. All right, next one is the intervention. Again, pause this and come up with your own answer. What change are we looking for? This one was easier. That was the use of doulas or labor support. Now, the control or comparison. What are we comparing the use of doulas to? standard care or no doulas. Now the outcome. What's the potential impact of the intervention? Again, pause it. This one is not as hard. A reduction in labor complications. This question didn't really incorporate a time component. If you wanted to, you could just say during labor or during the time the women are in the hospital in labor, but we just left that one blank. So how did you do? Does it make sense? Like any skill, it just takes some practice. Also, there is no such thing as a perfect PICO question. It really is just about working through the process. Okay, now we are at the third and final step. Taken our research interest, we've developed into a topic, broken that topic into the PICO format, and now we have to write a research question. You can also write a thesis statement as well, but usually PICO just ends up with research questions. Now, I wish I could remember where I saw this, but there was some source somewhere that added the words that I have in parentheses to the PICO format in order to make research questions easier to write. It doesn't always translate perfectly, but I find it really helpful. So let's work with our donut break example, trying to incorporate the words in parentheses to create a research question. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So among librarians, our population, does the implementation of donut breaks, that's our intervention, versus no donut breaks, our control, affect morale, the outcome. Again, we don't have a time. You could maybe add during finals week if you wanted. So this is where I see the real value of the PICO question. Not only does it help narrow a topic down, but it also really creates this beautiful research question, and that's what students really appreciate. It's your turn again. I want you to use the doula example. I went ahead and I included how we broke this example down in PICO, and I included the little prompts and parentheses as well. So pause the video, write the question out, say it out loud, and then we'll go ahead and look at how I translated it. So among women in labor, population, does the use of labor support or doulas, intervention, versus no labor support, our control, affect labor complications, our outcome. Is this making sense yet? Clear as mud? I know this can be challenging at first, but I also know that you guys can do this. There's always more. There just is always more, but not in this presentation. We will do some more PICO examples in our face-to-face -face class, but the LibGuide pages on both evidence-based practice and evidence-based nursing each have information about PICO. I find the templates that I've linked there really helpful. They go beyond the basic one I've talked about, and they focus on building PICO based on a specific question type, which I think is pretty cool. All right, you guys made it through the PICO section. That honestly is the hardest part of evidence-based practice, at least for the first few steps that we are working on. So what we've done is we have translated research interest into a focused topic and or research question through the use of PICO. It's a really good idea for all librarians who may interact with health sciences students to know the basics of how to use PICO to build a research question. These students are required to write their research questions in the PICO format, and a lot of them are not getting super great direction from the faculty members, or they're just plain confused and need a little extra help. So that's where we come in. It is a basic process, but it does take some practice. This has been pretty hard work, so you deserve a picture of an adorable goat. Good job, everybody.